G'day, Shane from SEQ Campers, and we're here on the Sunshine Coast giving a little refresher to the 2012 to 2018 Kimberly Camper trailers. This is just a real basic handover on all that range from 2012 to 2018. Let's go and have a look at your Kimberly Camper. At the front, we call this the front gull wing, and on here, what we're gonna have is anything with a blue handle. Won't open, it requires a spring, so we have to press the spring to open that up. Now, remember here, when this goes up, don't let it jump up in your face. The gas struts are very powerful. When we get in here, now some of them will have six switches, but in this unit, our lights are manual, so we've got an orange and white light, so two buttons for the two lights, and this one has the original white light. This is an upgrade that SEQ campers can do to your camper. So this is our manual switch for our overhead lights. Now the other gull wings will have switches just like that for our lights. Our kitchen has its own light, so let's turn on the kitchen light here. Let's go through that. That is my kitchen light of the camper. The next one here is fridge fan. Anytime it is hot, make sure that that fan is on. That's gonna draw heat away from the fridge when it's running. Water pump is just like that. We have water to our sink and shower. We also need the water pump on for running our Visi flow or pumping water from a creek. Hot water, turning on the hot water. Main power turns on the hot water. Then there's a little timer here. This guy here has a flame. Press the flame twice, once to wake it up, once to start. We're looking for a little flame icon and 30 minutes. We can hear this running. Now, if your hot water is not working, two things happen. Your battery voltage is low or your diesel fuel is empty. If you do have to then get this running again, you might have to start this up to 10 times just to get the fuel back in the system. So hot water on, flame button, the little flame is there, but our 30 minutes has disappeared. Now I can just press the arrow up and down to see my 30 minutes. And anytime I want to adjust the time, just press any of those arrows. If the time has run out, we could just add more minutes or press the flame button again. To turn this off, I don't want to turn it off on the main switch. Just press the flame button and that will now shut down. That is how we turn our hot water on and off. Now our last one here we have is our digital battery monitor. And on our batteries here, you can see we're drawing some power. We've got 12 volts in the battery. We're using nine amps to run these lights and the glow plug for the hot water system. And we do have it converted to watts or 100 watts. And we have used just one amp hour to get this going. Our percentage is 99%. Remember, AGM batteries, 50% is empty. Lithium batteries, 20% is empty. So right now on AGM batteries, we can draw 100 amps out of that 200 amp battery system. We can use 50%. Now the last one there is 11 and a half volts is quite low. So make sure anything above 12 volts is good. And that's a real quick look at our Victron battery monitor. This unit has two water tanks, so we'll take you through our two water tanks. Press the gauge, test, and it shows water in both tanks. The front tank being 70 liters, each dot is worth about 15 liters. The rear tank being 120 liters, so each dot is about 25 liters. There's always a bit in reserve. Now that is our dashboard. Let us show you through your keys and the rest of our kitchen. We've got some storage here. Our gas comes out like this. So what we're gonna do is press two handles down, press the two latches, pull all the way out till it clicks and locks in. Now with our gas stove here, it's one button, one tab to pull out, and it's two to go away. So we're gonna pull the two tabs out to go away and use the two yellow to go away like that. Just really quickly, two tabs down, pull it out. One tab, pull it out, all locked in. 
The quick walk burner here is a click start. So I will connect my gas hose to my gas bottle, click start, and there's a little windbreak for you. The next one is bacon, eggs, and toast. So there is a grill tray for underneath, and there is a wind guard here. It's going to lift up, pull forward, and that's our little wind guard set up for this unit. We're gonna take that one down, and it does have egg rings here as well. Gas line can connect to this bottle or the other bottle, two gas lines, two cookers. Just remember, this needs a barbecue lighter to light, and you do need to turn it sideways and push the button in to light it. That's a quick look at our stove. Our split pantry slides back. So we have the two pantries there and let's put this away. Two to go away, two tabs down to go away. Our fridge here, we've got a Merit plug in here, ARB fridge, one tab all the way out. Now this one happens to have a handy little stick to hold it open, but if you set up your fridge right with an ARB, you can actually just lift up that one, holding it open, ARB, really quick, really efficient, great fridge. Please read the instructions on that. Latch up here, fridge in and out, couple of drinks, fridge away, one click, till it locks in. Now we have our pole carrier. Inside here is all our camping poles. There's also two other poles on the bed for setting up the quick awning. There is our camping poles for the camper ensuite and the quick awning. Our kitchen, we've got some keys here. We have a little oval rock. So this little oval key matches that oval lock for the kitchen. Once we open it up, we can then slide this out. There's a little tab there, but we're gonna slide this all the way out till it locks. Having a quick look, please have a look at this. The square drive key, this is very important. Always lock your kitchen before you leave. You can see the tab on the side. This is very important. We're using the square drive key to lock the kitchen. We're just gonna come over here. Again, we can lock this with our oval key. Here we have our lights under our bench and we're gonna have two little tabs come out, lock the kitchen in. Tea towel holders, lights for my bench, very, very nice there. And then we do have a light for the sink and we can light that up. Now what we have here is hot and cold water. And we do have a water filter here on the, hot, on the cold water tap. So water filter for cold drinking water. Now hot water comes right from the tank. When I wanna put this away, it's two tabs, put that away. Inside here with our water filter, we also had a little travel leg. This kitchen will support for making a few sandwiches, but please put the leg under this corner and put that on anytime we're set up and leaning on it or dumping groceries on it. Very important to use the leg if we're using any weight on that kitchen. That's our little one. We have a fire extinguisher here, as well as our big drawers on this side. Just a quick look there. You'll see it there. There is um, soft clothes on the drawers, but we do have to latch them at the end. Pro tip, just on this side, this is our last one. Pro tip here on the yellow catch. Now what happens is someone will help you push the kitchen away and they'll actually find that the kitchen doesn't want to close. The damage would actually be up here where that tab, if we can come look at this tab up here, that tab is not moving because we've actually pushed it and jammed it in behind there. The kitchen doesn't close. It is because we just want to get a screwdriver under that tab and that will allow it to travel in. So again, pro tip, don't push it. Grab this one here, use our thumb, and give it a little pull back. The latch is nice and easy, and then we know it will go all the way in. That still has its lights on. Number one, we're gonna lock the kitchen, so I'll push with my hip, and I'm pushing, latching that all the way. And with my square drive key, I am now turning that forward. That's locked. Triple check, make sure your kitchen's locked before travel every time. Have we locked the kitchen? I'm just gonna check one more time, make sure that's ready to go. I can now turn my kitchen lights off. I know I've turned them off from there. Last one, we have two gold keys. So we have two water tanks on board here. The gold key wants to open this tank. Once it's open, we do wanna then turn it sideways again. So when we're finished, latch it up. This tank here, we just take an end off a hose, 
and fill it up. Drinking water on the kitchen side, this is my 70 liter tank. Bar driver's side, my 120 liter tank. We require a 15 amp lead to plug this in. 15 amp goes in. Once I'm plugged into mains, this power point will work. So I could use a little power bar. If I was at a campsite, I could use that as power off the site. When this is only when this is plugged in. Merit plug will only work if our DC plugs are turned on. So we have switches in the back and this guy will work when we turn on the switch inside. The back door. When we do drop this down, again, it's a little pressure latch here and there is a little round key and that little round key with a round circle will lock this back tailgate here. Press, don't let it drop, it's quite heavy, so support it there. Now, number one here that we do have is that our drawer pulls all the way out. If we don't store anything underneath, we'll be able to pull out the drawer at least halfway and we can pack this up at camp or at home without having to open the whole camper. That is just a look at the inside there. Looking at the driver's side of a Kimberly camper, anything with electric brakes, you need an electric brake controller inside the vehicle. All the trailers will come with the hitch. This is the part that goes on the vehicle, slides onto the treg. Um, so the vehicle part will come with these off-road hitches. When we open up the front here, again, there's clips on here and a small solar panel. That will only put in one amp. Underneath, we have a large solar panel. If we can come and have a look, now ideally, we will have a light in this front box. And right under here where my finger is, we'll see that there's an over center catch. Now, if you follow my finger, you can see that the bracket is only halfway, but all the way at the back. So at that halfway point, under there we're looking, the halfway point, the solar panel comes out, and there is my solar panel. Now what we have is an onboard regulator. So this Anderson plug, and again, this is what we call a 50 amp Anderson plug. That one, the only place to plug it in is on the side. This is a solar regulator for this solar panel. This is our 80 or 100 watt solar panel, depending on the model. And again, to put it back, I'm just going to put it at the back, halfway. Once I get past halfway, I can slide that in. Now, as you see, I have to put that clip back on. Great little storage. We've got canvas in the front, box of pegs and rope, quick, quick awning, and an L wall. We also have some straps here. These straps are designed for setting up our awning, and these ones will go with the loop on top of the pole through my groove here and back into the strap. So again, this one here are great straps for setting up our awning. Let's turn this light on. It is only manual. Let's turn that light off, close that up. To the next box. Now we do have two gas bottles for two cookers. Again, we have our blue ones here. So press the spring, open up with the blue handle, press the spring on the side, open up, let this come up. We're giving this one just a little bath here. So that's just caught on my little seal there. Now we do have our solar panel at the front. Now this is turned on, so I'm running that. We have two liter diesel tank. So this is our diesel for our diesel hot water. Now this one here will also have a little light. So again, rubber button. This is the light that most people forget about. So there is a light under there for this box and we could turn that on on its own switch. Looking inside here, this is our diesel hot water system. This is our shower water out. Just remember in the middle is very warm. This is hot, this is extremely hot. So please note that it will come out hot if it's been sitting for a little while. I would like to use VisiFlow. I want to pump water from a creek or I want to pump water or connect to a caravan park. Connect the water here. I must turn this one on. So I turn this guy on to allow water through there. I'm now pumping out of a bucket or a creek. I must turn this one off. We have our little blue one here tucked in there and I would then turn that one off. Oh give that a movement that stopped the tank and i'm only using outside water that was visi flow for outside water please remember pro tip you've got to close this one open this one and then we're set up to pump from the tank 
and we won't be sucking any air from here. Inside there is a heat exchange, diesel hot water, and our big water pump. That is a busy flow here of our Kimberly camper, and that's a look at all the gull wing boxes. Opening up our Kimberly camper. Now, three pins here, so I've got three clips to do. Remember, blue handle requires a spring, so we press the spring on the side. One, two, three. Now I undo these three clips. I have a barrel bolt here. Now with this barrel bolt, the idea is that it's got a little tooth on it. This bolt pulls out, turns sideways, and locks in that horseshoe in the open position. Now I've already done on the other side. So as long as I've got three clips and the bolt undone, I'm going to push this up. Watch for trees. So right here, I wanna stand on the side of the van not back here at the rear foot and throw it to the ground. Don't try and hold it. Just come here, push down and let it go. You see I'm standing up straight. Now with the right momentum, that might travel all the way over. Now if you ever find that that goes all the way to the ground with a big bang, it means that your gas struts are not working. We can provide new gas struts, which will make you feel 10 years younger because it will close so much easier. So when this does open, if it bangs right to the ground, you know you need some new gas struts. Now pro tip from SEQ campers is please, just right here, before it hits the ground, we can actually go and pull this canvas over. By pulling that over, there's no tension in the canvas, and we're gonna bring this one all the way down. So that barrel bolt we undid is gonna go back into the floor, and lock in there. Now my little bit of housekeeping will be to make sure I do this. The Kimberly camper is all sealed all the way around. So what I can do is pull this down and over, giving me just a nice running off the edge for all the canvas. There's no press studs, no bungee cords. Just as long as it's over the edge, I'll be fine. Now when I set up inside, I have two poles here. These spreader bars are gonna go above the door. The C-clip is gonna go on, so come on in. With this one here, if I can get the C-clip onto the metal up here, what I do is then open the handle and like a javelin, I'm going to javelin that out. Now I've just done that, but the pro tip is actually to undo these two, push that out, and lock that in. Just by lifting that up, I get myself a nice headroom and I've got lots of queen bed size space back here. Let's do that pull again. What we have here, handle, C-clip on the metal above the door, open the handle and like a javelin, I wanna be on the metal back here. I push it in, lock it off and that's us set up. Two minutes, we're in bed, ready to go. Pro tip on the doors. When we do the doors here, let's do the canvas one. Now I can find that this here is hard to close. So what I'll do, if you just look up here where my hand is, is that I find it quite difficult to close. There's a bit of a wave there. And like a ski jacket, if I put my hand behind, it stops that wave. So just like that, that's hard to close. Put my hand there and that closes a lot easier. Setting up like that. Again, same with this, bit of pressure on the zipper, that will close a lot better. Let's see how fast we can close this up. I've got two poles inside. I'm gonna remove them, put them on the bed, and close it up. Having a look inside, we've got lights overhead. Let's have a look at the switches. Now, under these switches here, I do have a reading light switch. I do have a DC outlet switch, which lights up my USB, the merit plug inside and outside. And then the last one here I have is for my under bed lights. So we do have great lighting there and my under bed and we have our reading lights up there with their own switches. Just remember those need to be off before traveling. Our drawer does pull out so we can have a look at our batteries under there. And then the last one is that we have an inverter. Now our inverter is under here, a little bit hard to see, but there is a power point under there. And ideally we're gonna then connect to another PowerPoint uh, power bar. And it's a 600 watt inverter. 
600 watts will charge my cordless drill, but it won't charge many appliances other than a laptop, a drone, and my cordless drill batteries. Please make sure you turn it off when you're not using it to save power. Our 240 battery chargers there when we plug in and our solar regulator. That is a quick look, turning the lights off of the inside of our Kimberly camper. G'day, now let's close up the Kimberly camper and let's see how fast we can do it. We've got two poles on the back. I'm gonna put them on the bed, lower the back section. Pro tip, number one, closing the camper. I need my doors open and rolled up so I can see inside the camper. One pole. We do want to make sure it's unbolted from the two back pins and then close it up. Now the idea is that I can tell it's unbolted, but I'm going to pull it closed. Now it's really important that we do pull from the front, pull down, and we use this as a handle, then use the bar as a handle. By pushing that in, pull down, pushing that in, that will close it up. Now I've done this a few times. Once you've done it five times, you'll be able to leave the awning zipped on, just throw the awning over top and do the same thing, pull it closed. Once I get to this point, that 170 degrees, it's very balanced. My doors are open. The only place I'm going to rip the canvas is right here on the knuckles. Now this is a $790 patch job to repair this. So we want to make sure that we are going to pull it away from that corner and go down under mine. We go down under and put that canvas underneath the bar. Now that was my best down under there. Now we're just gonna go down under. I can do that in two moves, just underneath, making sure the rest of my canvas comes up and clear. And if it's inside that silver edge, everything inside, then we're ready to go. Let me do the other side if you want to look through. We can see here, I don't know the shadow, but that bar, we don't want any canvas stuck behind it. That's where it's going to rip. So I'll pull it away from the corner and I'm just going to grab that corner down under my, and then the next one down under, and I've got it all inside. We're ready to close up. Now the best part here is all the weight is back here. So this is very light. It's never going to pinch my fingers. All I have to do is get the rest of those little pieces inside. Once it's all inside that silver edge, that rubber seal, it will then close up. Please make sure if you keep that clean or any of our seals clean, they will always work better. Now that I have done this, I get a second chance come over here to make sure that I haven't ripped the canvas. Now my second chance is to open up the tailgate and see those knuckles that we pointed at before. There's no canvas hiding them. There's no chance of me doing that. Now the best part here is if I leave that open and have lots of blankets on the bed this winter, then I will be able to let all the air out of the doona. So I'm gonna throw this up and over and let the gas struts do its work. Just there. Now I always say leave the tailgate open, but we were up Fraser Island camping the other weekend and I realized when I flipped that over, I still had sand in my feet. So I did end up having some sand here. If it's a dirty ground, leave this closed, flip that over, then open this up. Let all the air come out. Now I've done this on autopilot here, but basically I take this guy down. This is locked in the open position, which is sideways. I bring it down, undo from the horseshoe inside there. I know the lock position is up and outside is open. Pro tip, well, I want to get this one half latched. Now I could just get a bit of pressure on here, but sometimes I need my partner to help me. We'll squish it down. And once I got it half latched, it means I've squished all the air out of the canvas, out of the dooner. Now I can start from the back. At the back, big flat hand. One, two, three. 
and that's us all closed up. Please remember when you're doing it yourself, do both the back ones, then the next ones and forward, especially with two people. Now it is the back here, so I can see if I've left any lights on underneath the bed. Great opportunity for me here to turn the lights off. I can also pack my camper while it's closed, putting my clothes in there, all my gear in there. And once I do close it, I find that I can get two or three camping chairs, depending on the size, and get the whole family camping gear, last minute items. And that is closing up the Kimberly camper. Thank you.